Okay, let's keep reading. Since I didn't read yesterday because of the two crickets in my room invading and ruining everything. At one time, only Beato and her fellow witches had gathered in the smoking room to chat. Now, however, an unusually large number of people were present. <laughs> I wonder what kind of game Valor's gonna show us. I don't care what it is, as long as it's fun enough to relieve my boredom as I crush it. Leave everything to me, my master! I'll perform to my fullest and give you the results you desire! Yeah, you'd better. I kept making strange faces all last game thanks to you. I hope I don't start getting wrinkles from all that. Th there's no need to worry. The beauty of my master's face is without peer, no matter how wrinkly it may get. Ugh. Ah! Ah! Oh! in such high spirits. Banjo's game board really is something else. How sad is it that the master of this game board is no longer with us? A tiger dies and leaves behind its hide. Looks like Banjo died and left behind her game. Even though chess still exists, no one knows the name of the person who invented it. Oh, you're right! <laughs> Game inventors! Come to think of it, Battler really has kept us waiting, hasn't he? Is he still setting up the sixth game? Gertrude, how have Lord Battler's preparations progressed? Please allow me to speak. Know that he will be finished very soon. If he kept us waiting this long, he must be pretty confident in his plan. He really humiliated me in front of my master last time. I'll defeat him no matter what it takes. And you in particular. Make sure you don't screw up again. I will meet the challenge with all my strength. The previous game master, Lambda Delta, had confirmed that Balor understood everything about Beato's game. However, in order to prove it, Balor would have to run this game by himself and carry it through to completion. In other words, if Erica could crush this game of battlers, she would in effect wipe away the dishonor of the last game. Though Erica was chomping at a bit to get started, it was taking Balor quite some time to show himself. At the time, a swarm of gold butterflies popped into existence and took human form. From the shape of that familiar dress, everyone immediately guessed who it was. Look, it's Beatrice, and I thought you died and disappeared last time. Chick Beato! The one who died last time was Beatrice the player. This is probably just a piece, battler's piece. Even if she is a piece, it does not change the fact that it is her. Beatrice gave an elegant curtsy as she appeared. This humble entrance was so vastly different from her usual high-pitched laugh that it made the long-awaited start of the sixth game feel even more ominous than it otherwise would have. Sure. I'm trying to sneeze for some reason, but I'm trying not to sneeze, stupid body. Father will be here very soon. I ask that you wait for just a short while longer. Father? What the heck? Is this the new spin this time? Not only had Beato started talking in an unusually polite manner, she'd also used the word father, presumably referring to battler. Yeah, it's this new thing. I'm supposed to call him daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, hell! I'm so- It's so- It's so wrong, what the fuck? What the hell? Valor is in some weird shit. 
Erica, you have to punish Balor for this shit. <laughs> huh. The the nicknames for the Beatrice's I've heard is Beatrice Ushiromiya. Um Beatrice the witch that we know herself. Chick Beato. There's a lot of Beatrice's. For an instant, everyone was stunned in silence. But they quickly realized this was setting up some kind of theme, and they grinned. Beato wasn't the type who could keep up this kind of act for long. It'd probably fall apart in a few seconds, leaving her cackling rudely at everyone. Erica, who was itching for a fight, went for Beato almost at once. I can't believe that incompetent Balor is into being called Daddy? <laughs> I'm sorry! I had to say that! <laughs> okay, let me try that again! <laughs> I can't believe that incompetent Valor reached the truth of your game. I'm sure Father understands it quite deeply. He really is good at that sort of thing. Still, you're pretty lucky. If Balor had become the Game Master, you wouldn't have revived again. You really got the luck of the devil, don't you? <laughs> it's like, oh, this is their new role play. Luck of the devil? Well, either way, I'm going to pay you back in full for last time. You're just one of Balor's delusions, so I'll erase every part of you and knock you down to the abyss of oblivion. I too cannot allow you such an easy victory. I uh, look forward to having a good, clean fight. Huh? At this point, everyone realized something weird is going on. Why is there? I think their roleplay is going way too far. <laughs> <laughs> By this point, everyone realized that something weird was going on. There was no doubt that face, the dress, and the hair were all Beatrice's. However, her expression was different. Even though she had Beato's face, Beato would never show anyone an expression like that. What the fuck? <laughs> Are you? There was a heavy silence. Lambda Delta spoke for everyone there. At first, Beato had worn a smiling yet blank expression. However, when she realized that Mu had gotten suddenly stiff, her expression had finally darkened and she hung her head. Who are you? You appear to be Lady Beatrice. But... Are you not? Even Dalnor was forced to ask despite the rudeness of the question. That was how much this woman, who appeared to be Beato, was not. Am I somehow different from the Beatrice everyone was expecting? What are you talking about? Wait a second. Don't tell me you have amnesia or something. I, I was only born recently, so I have no memories at all. However, I will study hard in order to become the Beatrice you all expect. Beto, I thought I told you to stay in your room. Balor's voice came out of nowhere. His tone was very slightly cold. Beto's expression looked like that of a young girl being scolded. With a swirl of gold butterflies, Valor appeared. His dignified bearing and appearance were fitting for the ruler of this game. However, his expression was gloomy. And his gaze was directed at Beto. Go back to your room. You aren't supposed to be here. I just wanted to help you however I could, Father. Go to your room. 
He spoke both softly and forcefully. Valor didn't leave her any room for debate. Beato hung her head in curtsies as she prepared to leave the room. Also. Yes, what is it, Father? My name is Battler. Never call me by a different name again. Y yes. Beto melted in the cloud of gold butterflies and disappeared. This is the first part of the tale with Battler's Game Master. The witches had all assumed that he'd come forward with some flashy big development, so this was all completely unexpected to them. Their mouths were still hanging open. This is a pretty weird take on it. This is some pretty weird, kinky ass roleplay. I I'm sorry! <laughs> And then afterwards, Balor realized that he wanted to be submissive and not dumb. He never did this ever again. <laughs> this is a pretty weird take on it. Pardon me. Please forget what you just saw just now. <laughs> You're playing dumb, but this is all part of your plan, isn't it? You're scheming to give us the wrong impression, like North Wind and the Sun strategy, aren't you? Is there something wrong? Don't worry about it. It's nothing to do with you people. I see. <laughs> Guess it doesn't matter then. Okay, Battler. Start the new game right away. You cut us waiting so long, it's gotten totally boring. Sure. Let's start the sixth game. Erica and you too, Burncastle. This will be my tale. Proof that I reach Beatrice's truth. Lambda Delta, please watch this game until the end as the former Game Master. Sure, look forward to it. What's the title? Dawn, as in Dawn of the Golden Witch. Sure, wait, <clears throat> sorry, my bad. But Valor is a bottom. He can't be a dom. <laughs> Well, yeah, switches aren't bad either. <laughs> sure, if we're talking about a winter sun that goes below the horizon right away. Of course, my master. I'll drag it back down for you. At least your naming sense is good, battler. I'll give you that much. Better than check me with a gold witch. Oh! I'm glad you like it. Then let's get started. The 16 will now begin. Balor solemnly announced the start of the game. Compared to his fired up attitude at the end of the previous game where he and Erica had sworn to sell everything next time, he was extremely quiet now. Angie, Beto seems to have changed a lot since we last saw her. I'm surprised too. I don't have a clue what's going on. I don't even get why Beto was alive in the first place. I just finished reading it a second ago, but at the end of the previous tale, didn't she die just before Bala reached the truth? There are two kinds of death in this world. One of them is when a piece is taken for the game board. Such as death only exists within the bounds of the game. These lives can revive over and over again each time a new game begins. That's why the witches are so merciless when it comes to taking those lives. To the witch players, the lives of those characters who appear on the game board are no different from pieces on the chessboard that take each other's pieces and get taken. After all, these pieces will be set up again when the next game starts. Maria Sakutaro is a prime example of these. Sakutaro is Onichan's piece. Yes, that makes sense. In the game board that represents the inside of Onichan's head, Sakutaro certainly does exist, and is the piece that always stays by her side. Though he's nothing more than a stuffed animal in the real world. On Onichan's game board, he's no less of a piece than any other. But I wonder, if he were a piece in the witch's game, it should be possible to revive him easily, right? But Onichan wasn't able to revive Sakutaro in her world. 
That's because she lost that completely unique stuffed animal that was his vessel. Because of this, the conditions for that piece's existence were violated. It became impossible to revive him on Maria's game board. The only reason you were able to revive Sakutara on the game board was because you once again satisfied the conditions for his existence, correct? Whoops, my bad! The only reason you were able to revive Sakutara on the game board was because you once again satisfied the conditions for his existence, correct? True. Maria was only able to revive him because she had lost the stuffed animal that was his vessel. If like the rest of my family on Banjo's game board, she had needed a vessel for him. She would have been able to revive him as often as she wanted. I get it. It makes sense that Sakutara was on Nechan's piece. At least as long as his vessel was okay, he could have been revived over and over again. Correct. As long as his vessel is safe, he can be revived over and over again. That is what the life of a piece is like. That's the first kind of death in this world. What's the second? That's the death of beings outside the game board. To continue with the Sakutaro example, this would be like Maria's death. You mean not her death as a piece, but the death of the real Onechan, right? Not necessarily. Loss of interest or concern would have the same effect. When Maria outgrows playing with stuffed animals, Maria the game player will die. It's as quick and easy as turning off the switch of a TV when you get bored of it. I see. In that case, Beta the player completely gave up on winning during the last game. So she died and vanished. Which means if Beta ever comes back and she's got a chance of defeating Onichan, that means she comes back to life, right? Logically, that is true. It's the same for humans, witches, and even gods. If they lose interest and concern, they can die at any time. If they regain that interest, they can revive at any time. However, though the concept of time does not exist in the world of gods, and they can revive whenever they want, time shoots by like an arrow in the human world, and it isn't so easy there. You know, I just realized something. Her shading is like, it's more shell shaded, shaded in certain areas, compared to like Angie, who's like, no, wait, not shell, cell shaded. It's more blended in, like the Higurashi sprites, rather than Angie's, which is more cell shaded. My bad. That's interesting. And parts of her dress. That's true. Skipping school for one day might not be a problem, but if you skip for three days in a row, it'd really be hard to convince yourself to go back. And what if that stretched out for a month, a year? A decade, or a thousand years, like in the world of witches. I see. If you skip class for that long, it mean your death socially. After being dead that long, not only would you be unable to catch up on all your myths in the world at large, you'd also lose any motivation you might have had when you left. So, even though you'd be alive, it'd be fair to say that you died once. You would never again be able to regain the self that you once were it would never come back to life. <laughs> Beta lost any chance or hope of winning. Even though she knew this, she pretended not to and kept on fighting for many, many games. So Beta will not return. Her hopes were crushed. She spent all of her willpower that she might have used to regain the will to fight. Therefore, that Beatrice will never revive again. That Beata who just sat around the whole time with empty eyes in the fifth game must have been her corpse. She managed to remain on the game board despite it all, but then even that corpse was wiped away. I know a feeling like that. Kind of going through that. That's why I'm reading U Umi Neko, which is my, my comfort series. Well, anyone they cry, actually. If Beato had been the game master at the time instead of Lambda Delta, the game board itself would have vanished at that moment and everything would have ended. Come to think of it, Beato started to lose the will to fight back near the end of the fourth game. When Beato loses her will to fight, the world of this game disappears. However, the witches wanted to keep playing in this game board world. So Lambda Delta bound Beato in a place with that cursed shackle. 
She used that shackle to fix the game board in place and prevent it from disappearing. Even if Beto did lose the will to fight. In chess, this would be the equivalent of removing the set time limit for each turn, making it endless. However, simply having the game endlessly pause on Beto's turn would cause the witches to die from their illness of boredom. That's why Lana Delta took the position of Game Master. Starting then, Beto's existence was no longer one of the conditions necessary for the game's existence. That's probably why the shackles binding her to the game board were released. And that explains why she disappeared in the fifth game. So, when Onicha managed to reach the truth, it was one game too late for him to tell Beato about it. The fifth game was a fourth of charity on Lana Delta's part. She really showed Battlers and Mercy as the witch of certainty, acknowledging a strong desire to reach the truth no matter what. How can you call that charity? It's just those fickle witches killing time. Let's get back to the point. So that means this weird Beato isn't the Beato player. She's just a peace Beato. True. If that is the case, she should eventually become the Beato everyone knows. I imagine that that Beato is what Balder wants. You mean... He wasn't satisfied with just a doll. When playing with dolls, one can project the personality they most desire onto the doll. However, since you're acting out their part, nothing unexpected can ever happen. You cannot hope for any unanticipated happiness. In the human world, there's nothing so boring as a pre-established harmony. That's why, though a doll can become a person's best friend in the world, people eventually get bored and outgrow them. Onichan only wants the real Beto. He couldn't bear having a doll that only acted like Beto. A Beato born as Balor's peace would probably move a coin to Balor's wishes. That's only natural for a peace. Pieces move however their players tell them to, and they can't do anything else. I see what it is Onichan wants. So what's up with this weird Beato? Balor might be trying to revive Beato in the truest sense. That is the never-dying dream held by children of man. You just used the red to say that wasn't possible. That Beato will never revive. However, that doesn't mean that it is impossible for Beato to be born again. Have you forgotten? I believe that Mary Castle herself revealed Beato's true form at the end of the first game. Now I remember. She says something about how Beato exists as an incarnation of a rule. Information began to be accumulated based around that rule. And in the end, it took the form of the witch known as Beatrice. If that pattern is fall once more, the same Beatrice will be born again. And perhaps one could call that a resurrection. In other words, that weird Beato is Beato as an egg, or maybe a chick. That interpretation is probably accurate. In short, this Beato is a chick who might become to grow that... What? In short, this Beato is a chick who might grow to become that Beato. And that means this pure and lovable kid will eventually grow into that screwed up crazy witch. I can hear it now. <laughs> the laugh. I can still hear her now. Gay, gay homosexual. <laughs> Sorry. In other words, that Beato is a baby version of the Beato we all know. So just like how no person is born evil, the newborn Beato isn't evil either. Even though she really is a different person, if you measure her by her root or perhaps her soul, then maybe you really could call this a resurrection. However, this reality can't possibly be easy to accept. Though she may be technically Beato herself, she's also without a doubt a different person. And that way she acts would make anyone feel as though something's out of place. How entertaining. Hearing you read aloud is far from boring. I doubt you even really need someone to read aloud for you. It looks like you already know everything. I only reach that thought because I am engaged with a conversation with you. My thoughts are more numerous than the stars in the sky. 
I only appear to know everything to a child of man like you. However, without you here, I am nothing but a weak, sickly person without even the power to think. You know what? I kind of kin her. Yeah, I get that feeling. <laughs> if you just said that in the first place, I would have agreed to read for you a lot easier. My mood just happened to improve. Don't get an overswelled impression of yourself. Your life means less to me than a leaf one has lost after using it as a bookmark. Please keep reading already. Is that pretty much what you're trying to say? Okay. <laughs> Far from boring. You really do make an excellent Miko. Featherine rocked back in her rocking chair and looked up the ceiling, laughing as though the conversation itself was pleasant for her. Angie was slowly figuring out how to deal with the strange witch. In other words, Angie was in a retirement home taking care of the elderly. Her first act of charity. <laughs> I'm sorry. This person was also bored. It's not uncommon for a sick person who's bored from being bedridden for a long time to start acting rebellious. On the other hand, they can get a little bored of being treated kindly all the time. She may want to be shown respect for her superiority, but it's probably more interesting for her when she's spoken to rudely. What a coincidence. That's exactly how I used to be. Anyway, from what we learned in the fourth game, there's no doubt that there's been some kind of antagonism between Beato and Onisha in the past. Learning about this Beato might give us a key to finding the truth. It does seem so. It has caught my interest as well. Let's read her tale, too. Oh, sure. As you wish, my master. When Angie raised her hands like a conductor, the bookshelves in the bizarre study responded. Once again, several books floated out and began to swirl around Angie. If you're wondering why there's constant shifting or squeaks, that's me moving my legs so I, they don't fall asleep because I'm sitting on a bed, not a chair, because I had to move away from the chair because of the crickets. Kinzo's room is the... Pff, Kinzo's study is the room belonging to the master in the human world. So this study in the world of non-humans belonged to the master of the game board. It was a place where he could look down upon the humans. Therefore, one could hardly be blamed for mistaking the opposing Baroque man in the center of the study for Kinzo, if only for a second. But it wasn't Kinzo. This was Balor, the one who had taken up the position of game master becoming the new territory lord of this world. Around Balor was a swirl of glowing fragments, sparkling in the night sky. On the floor was what happened to be a red magic circle. To an outsider, it would seem nothing more than an incomprehensible geometric shape, but to Balor, who stood at its center, it was the outline for a new tale. A new line grew across the magic circle following Balor's gaze. Then at the instant it connected with a complicated symbol, the entire magic circle flashed brightly. Also, I had to say, in episode 5 when it said that the world, the fragment was gobbled up, I wanted to make a Kingdom Hearts reference, but it was, but uh, we were in a serious scene, so I couldn't mention that. And I forgot. So, how's it look? It is splendid, Master. The sixth game is complete. As Balor wiped his forehead and finally relaxed, Genji, who was staying behind him and watching over his every move, nodded deeply in response. I always thought being a game master meant you could make the tale however you want. But this is seriously harder than I thought. Balor be like, oh, oh, I want to be the game, the game master for d and D. I I want to DM, I do. Balor, in, when he plays D as a DM, I hate this, I never want to do this again. You must write up multiple tales and make the inner and outer sides of the story match. Though truly, you have displayed such skill, it is hard to believe that this is your first time. I believe even Erika will be satisfied with this game. Well, hopefully it matches that great detective's taste. Still, I gotta honestly respect Beato now. I can hardly believe that she managed to make tales this complicated and do it so easily. Easily. 
Far from it. Beatrice also worried and worried, racking her brain over various contradictions each time she created a tale. She was constantly battling with logic errors. Logic errors? That is when two sides of the tale do not meet, creating a contradiction. When this happens, it becomes a fatal violation of the rules known as the logic error. The game will immediately collapse and be destroyed. It is the greatest and worst form of error that the witch's side can make, and one must always be avoided. So Beato got close to bumping into those many times in her games? She fought with them every time she created a game. I believe it grew even more difficult for her as you became a more formidable opponent. So, do you think this game I made is good enough to show Beato? Yes, of course. Beato hasn't woken up yet, has she? It's been a while since her body was formed as a personification of the rules. Is she still not awake? After remaining silent for a long while longer, Genji answered. She woke up three days ago. You were concentrating on the construction of the sixth game, so I decided to wait before telling you. My sincere apologies. Oh, really? Yeah, I bet she was all still drowsy after sleeping so long. I really wanted to show her my game. No, it's more than that. I have to show her. I need to tell her that I understood everything. Balor's face broke into a smile. There was no trace in his expression of the hatred he once felt toward Beto for murdering his family. In a way, that was the final reel of the fifth game. Yes, when Balor reached the truth, there was a great change in his impression of Beto. So, should we assume that there really was something between Onyichan and Beato, and that he forgot all about it? However, Balor suspected this in the fourth game and asked Beato about it. According to the tale, this was denied by the Red Truth. Six years ago, no person called Beatrice existed for Balor. We can read this as saying that Beato did not exist six years ago. Or it could simply mean she had no connection to Balor at that time. However, either way, Balor did not ro visit Rokinjima at all for the next six years. October 4th, 1986 should have been the first time Beatrice and Onichan met. If so, why was there already some kind of antagonism between them? I don't have a clue what it means. That sin of Ushiromiya Balor's, which Banter took Balor to task for in the fourth game might give us a clue. The result of that might have been Beatrice herself. And the result? The result of Onichan's sin was Beato? That almost sounds as though Onichan created the witch called Beatrice himself. Almost as though Beatrice was Balor's piece. Huh? Balor sinned six years ago. Because of that sin, people died. The one doing the killing was Beatrice. If you consider the possibility that everything is connected to Balor's sin six years ago, then the one who created Beatrice was Balor himself. I thought it sounded almost as though she was Balor's piece. I don't get it. Even if Onichi had sinned in some way, his crime couldn't have been anything close to murder. If this huge massacre is in retaliation for what he did, that's totally out of proportion. Beto kill our family. Dad, Mom, Onichan, everyone. I can't believe that Onichan's sin was anything deserving of that. The weight of the sin depends on the person measuring it. Even a sin so light that Balor might have forgotten. Could have been so serious to Beto that she hated him enough to massacre his whole family a full six years after the fact. Well, even I find that a bit excessive, and more importantly, if she were a person like that, I would find it hard to accept that Balor would act so friendly toward her after discovering the truth. Featherbrain's observation was an interesting one. In the past game, Beato clearly said that Onichan's sin oh wait. In the past game, Beato clearly said that Onichan's sin was six years ago. It was the cause of this two-day tragedy. I still don't know what kind of sin that was. However, he figured it out it was at the end of the fifth game. 
He even apologized to Beato, even though she was a witch who massacred his entire family in retaliation for his sin of six years previous. Balor apologized to her. Of course it was the player Balor who apologized, not the peace Balor whose family had been murdered over and over again. But even so, Balor must have remembered something at the end of the last game that made him feel like apologizing. Does that mean this sim from six years ago is hidden somewhere in the tales that we might have seen so far? I have already formed a certain theory on that matter. Oh, let's hear it. <laughs> I cannot tell you yet. I want to enjoy being the only one who knows the answer for a little while longer. Well then, I guess I'm done reading for you. <laughs> well, we can't have that, can we? Have some patience and read a bit further. My theory is still nothing more than I guess. Once I'm certain of it, I'll tell you. Okay, okay, my master. I actually do want to hear what comes next, after all. Just what kind of connection do Onichan and Balor have with each other? Understanding that will probably give me a massive clue toward finding the truth of this world. After all, because he remembered that, he was able to reach the truth. Beatrice! Welcome, Master. Beatrice is waiting for you. This way, please. This Balor was a villa set aside for Beatrice's use. It was a sacred site for her only, built so she could spend her days without being affected by the outside world. My heart began to race. I'm so glad she was able to revive and that everything's okay. Beato is a personification of the rules. So even though she was destroyed once, it's possible for her to be reborn again. Balor had quickly succeeded in reviving Beato's body, but he had trouble summoning her soul back. However, during that time, he spent immersed in the creation of the sixth game she had woken up. And this time had happened three days ago. Balor let himself be led into the dining hall. The dining hall had been set up for his and Beato's use. It existed so they can enjoy some black tea while having conversations that were only possible now that he had reached all the truth. I want to tell her. I want to tell Beato that I found the truth. Balor couldn't hold back his excitement over this miracle he'd been granted. The miracle of Beato waiting for him in the dining hall to hear what he had to say. How is Beatrice? Same as usual? Is she doing well? Oh yes, she's doing quite well. She has been waiting for you this whole time, Master. Oh, yes. So she's in the dining hall. Is she eating or something? Ah, uh, that's okay. It doesn't matter either way. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Beatrice! When he swung open the doors to the dining hall, Balor was greeted by a wonderful sight. Though the food laid out on the table wasn't particularly sensational, it was arranged beautifully, and a champagne ball stood there waiting. Then the person clad in that familiar dress with the beautiful golden hair bowed deeply in green. Be Beatrice, you have my sincerest gratitude for giving me this form. <laughs> Come on, don't worry about that. I'm so glad, Beato. Balor rushed up to Beato and hugged her tightly, just to make sure her body wasn't just a mist or an illusion. I solved your riddle for you, but then, before I could tell you about it, you went and disappeared. I'm right here. I will not disappear. It's okay, you can stop talking like that. I'm not going to ask you for anything in return. Anyway, I want to apologize, and I want to talk with you. I don't even know where I should start. You have done nothing that you need to apologize for, Father. I'm glad just to be of service of you. Beato? Beatrice was born for your sake, Father. Please let me be support for you. And Father, congratulations on completing the sixth game. I told you, stop talking like that. You're creeping me out. Do you find the style of speech displeasing? Please forgive my rudeness. Well, I don't find it displeasing, but it's not like you. I 
Guess I like the way you usually talk best. Beja smiled vaguely. To Ballard, it probably looked as though they were both smiling at the unusual way she was talking. However, Beja's smile literally was vague and uncertain. After all, she didn't know how she was supposed to talk. Anyway, Beato, just what kind of joke is this? Uh, don't tell me this is the great Beatrice decided to cook for me. When I heard that you had completed the sixth game, I wanted to see if I could prepare a modest reward to congratulate you. Oh, Beatrice worked really hard to make this. I didn't even need to lend a hand at all. No, I didn't. The food set on the table was really modest and expertly made. You could tell by looking at it that Beato, who wasn't particularly skilled with cooking, had given it her all. Like in the Valentine's special. However, signs of discomfort and irritation were beginning to appear on Balor's face. What's going on here? Well, as she said, Beatrice wishes to congratulate you. Sweat was starting to show on Kumasawa's forehead. She was also feeling uneasy. When he noticed, Balor realized it wasn't just his imagination. Beto turned her back to Balor and stuck a corkscrew into the champagne bottle. She showed it to Balor. Father, congratulations on the completion of the sixth game. In the hopes that you will prove victorious over your longtime rival, Fruito Erika. When presented with a champagne ball, and it sounded like that, anyone would think the cork had been pulled out. However, it wasn't the cork. It was the bottom of the bottle. The high-quality champagne that Banjo had procured splashed out all over the floor in her dress. And the same sound repeated several more times. Each time one of the plates of food on the table was knocked into the air. Father, did you find the food displeasing? Who are you? I I'm Beatrice. I was born for your sake, father. That's not right. Huh? Who is this? This isn't Banto! And anyway, don't call me father! What's going on here? What is this? Didn't I revive Banto? Genji, what is this all about? My apologies. But that is indeed Beatrice. Are you kidding me? How is this supposed to be Banto? She's totally wrong, a fake! No, this is Beatrice. This is without a doubt Beatrice who was born in accordance with the rules of the game board. No, this isn't anything like Banto! Banto would always talk in that weird way and laugh rudely and, and... No, this is most certainly Beatrice herself. And why is she talking like that? Why is she calling me father? But Beatrice was only born a short while ago. It would be far too cruel to expect her to act as she did want so soon. Are you saying that her memory hasn't returned yet? Master, this person truly is Beatrice herself. However, she is not the Beatrice you know so well. What are you talking about? I'm the Game Master, right? Why can't I revive Beato? Beatrice has revived. How the old Beatrice lived for a thousand years, and this Beatrice, on the other hand, was only born a short while ago. If she appears to be a different person, well, that just can't be helped. Then, how can I revive that Beato? Her body's right here! How can I revive her soul? If she lives the same thousand year life again, she should become the same Beatrice she was before. Are you telling me to wait a thousand years?! A person's personality isn't solely decided by their birth. It can change drastically based on how they live and what they experience. Valor's like, I I want my mean person back. I like the mean too, Valor. Do you understand? Even though she is the same Banto, she is not the same. I get it. Even if you had two of the exact same person, they change enormously depending on their upbringing. Even though they might both be the same human to start with, their upbringing could change them so much that they effectively become two completely different people. Usually, we use the term person to refer to a person, not their personality. However, since humans recognize a person by their personality, those two might as well be different people from a human perspective. That's so true. 
If that tragedy 12 years ago hadn't happened, this little lady of ours might actually be a cute girl who could smile without looking weird. That's rude. I'm plenty cute as it is. I understand. If person- Wait. That's rude. I'm complete- I'm- pff, That's rude. I'm complete- pff, Hold on, let's try it again. That's rude. I'm plenty cute as it is. <laughs> well, I'll be right back. I should have taken a cookie break and ate a chocolate s'more cookie. Too bad. I understand. If a personality is what makes a person a person in our eyes, you could probably say that a second personality represents a different person entirely, even if it inhabits the same flesh body. At the very least, I'm a completely different person than I used to be 12 years ago. And if my family had come home 12 years ago, then the Angie resulted would surely be a different person for me. Even a single human can become a different person. In fact, depending on their upbringing and endless possibilities, they can become an endless number of different people. So just because this is Beato, there's no guarantee she'll become the Beato Nietzsche knows so well. For instance, if I wasn't traumatized, I'd probably still be so direct and in people's faces. <laughs> On top of that, Beatrice is a witch who lived a thousand years. People can die and be reborn in just three days. A thousand years is such a huge amount of time. It seems you're quite a skilled reader. For most of my readers, it would be necessary to spend several hundred pages to explain how a single person can become different people depending on their upbringing and time. Oh yeah, just like how some people couldn't understand episode 8. Don't underestimate your readers. We aren't just reading. We read and we think. If I make a hundred people read it, about ninety will be able to. However, only fifty will actually understand what it means. And not even twenty will actually think beyond that. And all I ask is that they think it over a bit. Nothing more than that. <laughs> ah, I know people who, who consume media like that. God, they are such a pain. They're like, what? A story is just a story. It's like, family can only be, like, your blood relatives. It's just what people just write over being idealistic. As if there aren't stories that are based off realistic things. Fucking bullshit. I'm sorry, but if you want to be a fucking writer, you can't be fucking like this. Sorry, I, I have to pull out the F-bomb. This fucking pisses me off. Fuck that mentality, okay? Okay, that, okay? Y the, like... Because people wouldn't write like this if they didn't have passion for it. <laughs> okay? It pisses me off. I, I know I know somebody like this makes me so mad. Okay. Okay. I'll pull I'm I'm putting away the F bombs now. <laughs> However, it seems that you are one of those precious twenty readers. That's why I invited you here, child of man. It was seriously hard to like this Hachijo Toya person. However, though this forgery she had written was still in its first stages, it definitely felt as though it contained something very similar to those tales in those message bottles. Speaking metaphorically, one might call it a scent, an indescribably unique and stern atmosphere like a stuffy library. The Beatrice who wrote the message bottles and Hachijo Toya are different people, and yet this is the same scent as that tale. I see. This is why some of those curious witch hunters are so intensely devoted to her. Their keen sense of smell was able to sniff out that familiar scent. Very well then. Please continue reading. There could be nothing more entertaining than watching your face as you glance over the words. That, and speaking with you. I guess it's true that writers are always starving for opinions on their works. However, sorry to disappoint you. I don't have time to read all the way through this thick manuscript. More importantly... And yet, you have plenty of time. Both the second hand and the pendulum of the ornate clock behind Hachijo had been moving the whole time. However, absolutely no time had passed for a while now. Only about three minutes had gone by since the time she had entered the room. See, time isn't one of your problems. 
No sort of time will chase you away until you finish reading. Ah, if only that could really be true for me. Next page, lady, next page. I'm a goose of badger. <laughs> I'm a goose of badger me to turn this page, so I return to the world of the tale once more. Why does her tale have the same scent as Beatrice's, I wonder? Is it because she actually has reached the truth as she claims? Does this mean that anyone who knows the truth could create an endless number of message bottles? Is that how the cat box world works? I see. I guess she might also be an endless witch. In fact, maybe anyone who knows the truth can become an endless witch. An endless tale created by endless witches. The two days starting October 5th. Oh, pff, the two days starting October 4th, 1986, where my family is being toyed with endlessly. I have to end it. I have to find a hint of the truth from within this story. An endless, endless tale. We gotta stop the people from talking about it on YouTube. What do you think, Beato? How's the sixth game I made? Well, you're not the type to give me an honest compliment anyway. You'd probably say something more like, not bad for an incompetent fool like you. <laughs> not bad for an incompetent fool like you. <laughs> now that I've seen what it's like to be a game master, it's pretty clear. I wasn't the only one who had a rough each game. Creating a game is far from easy. I certainly never expected us to recognize each other's efforts like this. Creating a game is far from easy. I certainly never expected us to recognize each other's efforts like this. All wrong. This isn't Beto. Balor slammed hard on the desk, but the piece Beto showed no reaction. After all, Balor hadn't ordered her to react. It'd be easy to provide that Beto as a piece. Boy failure. <laughs> However, it would only move according to Balor's wishes. Having a conversation with it was no different from talking to himself. The Game Master could summon any kind of piece. He could move those pieces in any way he wanted. Reigning as an absolute god. You just haven't immersed yourself yet, Balor. You gotta get more into it. Like me! <laughs> However, for that very reason, they were just pieces. That made it unbelievably lonely. And sad. I just get bored. <laughs> you created many kinds of furniture as well as several tales in the past. When I saw that, I was sure you were having a great time doing it. But that's all wrong. You were unbelievably lonely. It must have been such a relief for you, having an opponent like me who could actually go against you. Yep. I'm painfully aware of that now. That weird, polite Banto. Really was you, wasn't she? The way you were a thousand years ago. And yet, she's a different person. The way she looks just like you is what I really can't get over. I can't stand it. However, she is not a piece, so she can go against my will. That Banto is much more alive than a piece like you. I get that. But it's all wrong! That isn't you! She's a completely separate person, like a long-lost little sister or something! And that's why... I just can't accept her! As much as he hated the peace version of Beto, Balor felt an even stronger dislike for the chick Beto. Even after a whole thousand years, she still wouldn't become the original Beto. Even if she were ordered to act like the original Beto, it would only be an imitation. This is very similar, but separate person. And definitely not Beto herself. So in the previous game, Beto really did disappear for all eternity. Even after becoming the Game Master. There is no way to revive her. Laugh. Laugh at how pathetic I am. <laughs> Just 
give it a rest already. It's just an illusion who won't laugh unless I order it. Who can't even continue to laugh unless I keep on ordering it. Just disappear! Oof. Balor wanted a cool cape. But at what cost? The curse of capes. Don't ever wear capes. First rule of being a superhero. Just kidding. Beatrice, the new witch who was revived from the rules. She has not lived a thousand years. Her behavior is vastly different from how it once was. She is a witch who doesn't even know how to use magic. However, she has no fear of magic circles or spider webs. It's almost as though she's just a human. She's attached to Balor. It makes it her, her goal to do whatever she can for him. Okay. Oh, wait. No. Okay. No tips. All right. Well, then, it's a good night. Good night. Do, 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 do.